Hello everyone, welcome to another game review lesson. This is the first subscriber game review. So I've received this game from a subscriber who wants this game reviewed. So let's take a look. Reviewing these games is really important because say if you learn one or two mistakes, usually more than one, right? Two or three mistakes per game. And if you have 20 or 30 games reviewed, that's more than 50 mistakes that you can potentially avoid forever. And that's huge for any beginner or a lower level amateur player. So that's why you need to have your games reviewed. And I always welcome game review requests. Now I don't have a lot. And I'll do it first come, first serve. I'm a graduate student, so things might get busy sometimes, but I'll try to make at least one video per week um, in game reviews if I have enough things to review. So you can always reach me at the email on my about page. I'm also on Reddit. You can PM me with an SGF file and I'll take it from there. So let's take a look at this game. Four, four moves, my favorite. I love the start points. This approach, perfect. And now we have the first problematic move of the day. Number six, that's not an approach move. Number six is a bad move because it does not put any pressure on number one here. It's too far away. And number six itself, of course, does not occupy any territory on the side. So Black's response is pretty good. Just does a corner closer on the upper right. It's a good move. Or you can extend here as well. So the best White can do is to extend here. It's a one space extension, which you should never do under no pressure, right? White really chose to do this. So that will be bad. This will be really bad for White. And of course, you should never do this. You should never bump your own stone, one stone against your opponent's wall like this. This is even worse for white. So black's corner closer is fine. It's not a mistake. You might think white turns out to be pretty good this way. No, it, it's a two-space extension on the side, which is probably the smallest thing you can play on the side. And number eight is only a pincer, which is part of a joseki. And now black jumps into the corner, perfectly fine. White blocks from this side. Black cross on the third line. This is a joseki so far. And now here's our second mistake of the day. It's a trick move. So black actually got tricked here. White is not supposed to play here. So the joseki, if you already know this joseki, bear with me for a second. But if you don't know, the joseki should be here. right? So white has no cutting point, which is really important. And black plays this exchange on the second line, threatening to connect back number five. And it's also very, very important for ice space. This bend and connect 13 to 15, you're going to see it a lot in other variations because this is very important for Black's ice space here on the corner. And in the past, the Joseki is connecting here, but this leaves this clamping move and this potential connection underneath at 19. So it's kind of annoying for White to leave number 17 as an option for Black. So that's why in the age of AI, the Joseki is right here on the second line. And number five is kind of paralyzed. It's very hard to pull out. Number five were to cut white here. That'd be a tough, tough fight for black. So number five, you can forget about it as black, but black can jump out here, which is really good. So black takes the corner territory and it still jumps out to the side. So white doesn't have a whole lot of control over the left side. And this is about even, right? This is a Joseki, totally viable, playable for both sides. But in our real game, white plays this move. So and black answer with this one, which is exactly the wrong move that white is expecting you to play. So there are two ways. I would say two ways. Some professionals might recommend only one way, but I think there are two ways to play this. Um, standing down here, we're playing this bet, right? So, and I will talk about this cut as well. So it gets a little complicated, but standing down here is really simple. White must connect now, and black can pull back number five. The ice base is definitely enough to make a living shape, right? This is, this is a very comfortable ice base for black on the corner. And white doesn't gain anything. White probably will need to extend here on the side. So black has sente. White's up, upper side is really small. It's just a two-space extension. There's no potential, right? And black has taken white's corner here, and black has sente, right? Black can play something like this. And this is already really good for black because white's efficiency is really low. So that's why whites will want to try to kill number five, right? And of course you can say white can play here, but now black can cut. And either these three stones will die or this one stone will die. And all of them are pretty big. 
So if white pulls back here, black can simply play this. And now these three stones are dead. There's no way white can capture black, right? If you try this, black can just wedge here. You can't come in here. And white is just going to be captured like this. Just don't try to connect all of this. I'm just showing you uh, what if white tries really hard to escape. Uh, it cannot. So if you're white in situation, maybe you want to swallow number five this way, but number 12 will be dead. And that's huge, right? That, that is huge. Now, black has great potential here toward the left side. And is number five fully dead? Not yet. Even if it is dead, this is still great for black because it has taken white's corner here on the third line, extending here on the fourth line, and this is just not acceptable for white. So that's why white cannot play at number 14. So I think number 13 is a simple way. Uh, if you think the left side is okay for white to occupy and you want to connect to number five, which is good in this situation because it really reduces white's potential on the upper side. And number six and eight is very low efficiency. Another move is this. You might see this. Um, the idea is to play this exchange first. But of course, even when black plays here at number 13, white can still connect here. And now black can pull out this way, which is arguably better than the previous variation, but I don't think there's a huge difference. It's probably the same. Uh, maybe some people will say it's better, but it's AI will tell you, but I don't think for beginners and amateurs it makes a difference. But what if white still blocks this way and tries to capture number five? Now can you cut? Maybe, but black is not yet alive. So the peaceful way to do this is just to claim here, white will have to connect now. Because if you cut here, white can play this move, you can't fully capture these four stones down here, right? They can still escape. But if you climb here, now the idea is that if white stands down, you can cut. And white will probably need an extra move here to connect back. And one of the two will die, or white will be forced to play a lot on the first line. I mean, the second line. Okay, so let me sort this through. White cannot cut here, because this way white will die, 12 and 18. White also can't play here, because I'm guessing you can just enclose white this way. We can play this first, and try to enclose white. Not 100% sure, actually. Sorry about that. Seems like white can crawl. This is probably the strongest move. Threatening to move out. Can black play this now? White plays here. Black will be able to pull out this way. This would be great for black, right? Black is alive. White is very short on liberties. This would just be a fight. Um, and it should be okay for black. An easy way to do this for white is just to connect here. So this is very similar, you would say, to the actor Joseki, but it's worse for white because white also has white always has this push, um, but pushing here reduces white's liberties. So white's liberties are much tighter now, and this is not good for white. So if you want to avoid this potential fight, uh, you can just play a number thirteen here, and this is my preferred move actually. If I see an opponent play here, I just play this. They don't know about the cut, you cut them. You probably already have a very high chance of winning already at number 15. If they realize their mistake, you can play this. This is still great. All right. You do not want to play this because white can play this bend first. Again, this is very important for liberties and for the ice base. And black will have to crawl like this. I think white can still connect down here. No? Again, this will be a very, very complicated fight. Um, so the key lesson is that black does not want to play this cut right away. You want to play here or here. Um, so I'll do a separate lesson on this, I'm sure, sometime down the line when I introduce this Joseki. So what? Sorry. So once again, this is the correct Joseki sequence that you should remember. And I'm guessing black is expecting this from white, but white played this trick move. And black got tricked. Black played here. Now the next white move is again wrong. It's just wrong. Um, and of course, <laughs> black also played the wrong move here. 
We'll split this through. If you're white in this, in this situation, black played this, this is great. You've pressed black all the way down to the second line, right? It'll be something like this. Um, this is just great for white. This is just great for white. Um, because now black is on the second line. Compare this to the actual Joseki, white has a lot more potential here. And black is just really squeezed on the side. But white's move here is just wrong. Black can cut here and, and capture these two stones. Right, we can try this fight. It's a race to capture, so if white stands down here, this doesn't work. We've seen this previously. These three stones cannot escape, right? We tried this, you're just gonna get Atari from behind. And now you only have two liberties left. So white's strongest response is to play the two Ataris, 18 and 20, and play these two bet. What will happen now? Feels like white had, has to connect here or here. And black will just bend here, or bend here. If it bends here, white can come in like this. If black captures, white can make this eye. Right now, black cannot connect. Otherwise, black will die this way. But black can maybe play something like oh, after this. Black can play, play something like this. White will just connect this way, maybe this way. Black will have to make a living shape. Maybe this is not good for black. I don't know. <laughs> but let's try another move. Right, you can play this. So number five will be connected this way at 17. White cannot come down this way. It will be just, this is a ladder. So white will have to play this. And black can play something like this. Again, this is okay. This is playable for black. Black can come in from this side. We'll play something like this. I don't know. Um, so all that is to say, connecting here is not a great move, right? We might be thinking this, but this is not great in this, in this situation. White takes the corner, number five is still isolated, right? So you see, it's actually quite complicated when you do not play Joseki's, your capture techniques, your capture race, awareness, and techniques come into play. And things can get really complicated really fast, as I like to say. So you can try to sort out some of these variations on your own. I don't think I personally have the capacity, I have to admit. Um, and these can get quite complicated. So, black connects here in the real game. And this is already very bad for black because white can play on the outside. Um, maybe this is better. I don't know. It's about the same. The black will have to live like this. Number 19, I think we can just connect here. This should be okay. And white place seems a little fancy, but it should work. I don't think black can cut here. There's nothing for black to play. White is all alive, very strong on both sides, and black will have to escape. So this is not something that black will, will want to play. All right, so black takes sente, good move. And white plays this Joseki. A little problematic. If I were white, I would just like still try to pincer on this side because you have the left side. It's a good potential on the outside. So this is already very, very good for white because this result, you can, if you compare that to the actual Joseki, right? When black comes out on the left side, now black is completely confined to the corner. It's very small, it's about four to five points. And black doesn't have number five, so this is really great for white already uh, because of black's mistakes here. But white chooses this Joseki, it's fine. This move, number 26, usually you see this or this, right? Number 26, a little greedy. Number 27, this is another Joseki, more or less. Probably good for black in this situation because having a base on the left side really reduces white's potential here on the upper left. And the next move is just probably the most wrong move. Uh, in this game is right here. It makes no sense. It really makes no sense. Um, I can't justify that. Like you, you probably can't either. So now remember, like to take your eye off of your of your opponent's previous move. Right, take your eyes off of your opponent's previous move in the opening. This pattern is already over. The board is half empty. Please look at the right half of the board. Right, just look at it. 
see how empty it is. Especially see how there's only one stone here on the lower right. You should always, always play the corner. If you're white, play the approach. If you're black, you can play the corner closer. So this is where white should play. And that's actually very basic, right? All teachers will tell you. But that's obviously not something that beginners and amateur players will follow. Um, so number 28 here is obviously the correct move in this situation. This is just doesn't make any sense because the left side is so small. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to put pressure on black? That's not the correct move because 29 is a perfectly fine response, right? So I'd say in this situation, black will need to respond. Otherwise, white can play something like this, right? Now, white has more potential here. It's kind of beating this potential. Yeah, but black can just extend here. And what is white trying to do? It's gaining like, I don't know how many, like six, seven points here on the side. It's really small. Remember, an approach is probably worth one of 30 points. It's hard to quantify because anything can happen after you play a corner closer or an approach. But just think of it as more than 30 points. Um, and this is only seven points. This is way too small. And it's also solidifying black's shape here. Black should just extend here further. This is already rock solid. And what is white trying to do? Maybe this is white's idea, but this is too small. This is way too small. Black can just play on the side here, play this corner closer here or here. Um, and black is getting some of the losses back already. So this is just really bad for white. But blacks, this is an overplay. So if you forget, if you if you forget about the whole upper left, number 31 is a good move because it puts pressure on 28 and 30. But the problem here is that 28 and 30 are already connected to the upper left, to 14 and 16. So they're not afraid of being attacked. And now black is an extra cutting point, right? So white maybe doesn't want to cut right away. Maybe it wants to. Depends on your mood. But this is kind of an overplay for black, I would say, because number 28 and 30 are already safe. Just extend here jump toward the center, and white's potential will really be limited. It's really narrow, right? This is not a whole lot. This is just the wrong direction for white to play. Um, this whole sequence by white is just so wrong. So after the end of the sequence, actually, black has already regained some of its losses. So now we see another very problematic move by white played here on the second line. Um, the idea is that, of course, it can kind of connect back either at here we're here, right? So it's like reducing Black's territory. It's a it's like canceling out, like, I don't know, eight points of territory down here. I can't really count whether it's eight or seven or nine. But what I do know is that this is smaller than 30 points. So the reason is pretty simple sometimes in Go. Eight is smaller than 30. Yeah, pretty sure that's true. So that's. <laughs> That's why you shouldn't play these end game moves at the beginning of a game when half of the board is empty. So in this situation, if you're black, if you want to respond to this, maybe you want to. Um, why not? Um, I think this would have been fine. Um, this would have been fine. Kind of leaving this corner open a little bit more. But I think the game too, right? You, you do not want to allow white to connect this way, because now the corner is much harder to come in for black. And of course, you can find lessons that talks about this shape, how the black can come into the corner. I think I'll do a lesson on that in the future as well. So black plays this, this is, this is fine. So white has played a big end game move. It's not even that big, but it's an end game move. All right, so the right half of the board is still empty. White plays an end game move here. It's really just trying to give back a lot of blacks Losses here on the upper left. So number 41 here is actually a little problematic. Why do you want to contest this territory? Once again, this territory is, I don't know how many points you gain by contesting here. It's like three points, three or four points, right? If you want to reduce white's potential here, which it doesn't have a lot, you can play this move, right? You're not afraid of this cut. Just sacrifice number 37. You're still perfectly connected, right? This is okay for black. Um, so 41 here would have been fine, but this is problematic, number 43, because now you still have this cut. Um, I think that's my point, right? You still have this cut, and, but in the real game, white plays this move, and this is just like 
probably even worse than 32. Like this is not doing anything. This is a one point move, right? White literally just gains this one point by playing this move. Like, and that's something you should be careful about in, in, in games. Like what? What are you trying to accomplish? Nothing. You're already alive. You don't have potential. This is just a wasted move. And number 44. And now black takes care of the cutting points. This is actually pretty good for black because black has this nice potential toward the center now. And white has played all these moves on the second line. White has gained about, I don't know how many, maybe about five points, right? Because I would already give white these points after the upper left variation. So this is, <laughs> yeah, this is what's a little frustrating sometimes seeing these types of games because number 44, like, what's your thinking behind it? I'm sure white has no answer for me because he didn't think. Um, so, so now this is actually playable for black again, despite the losses on the upper left. And now we see another bad move from white. Uh, this is not an approach move, right? I think I teach this in the opening chapter, chapter four. I teach about the wrong approach moves and how you should respond to it. And my suggestion is that black should play here, right? White is not coming from the corner from this side. So number 46 is just like, it really does nothing. It's just like number six, right? It's helping black to solidify the corner here and white still owes a move here on the side, right? You need to extend. Otherwise, if you come in from this side, you're gonna be under attack, number 46. And black is relatively secure here on the corner after three and 47. So this just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, the correct response should be here at number 47. And number 46 just doesn't put enough pressure on the corner. It's not a proper approach move. I don't know who taught white this move, but it's really bad. And y'all should know that. So black 47, not too bad, right? Extend on the left side. Um, not bad, but white can come in this way, right? Which is kind of annoying. Um, so white has actually gained some eye space. White is trying to, trying to gain eye space on the corner, right? If black blocks here, white will probably play this, threatening the cup. Black, black will have to connect here. And white has already built a base. So this is white's idea. But black's next, next move here is actually fine uh, because you don't want to give white sente here in the corner and black kind of occupies the left side here. So this is, again, white is giving away its own advantage. Uh, from here on, I'll go a little faster. So once again, like this, this, don't play this large knight's approach, right? You're just inviting black to solidify its corner this way. So this is a terrible exchange. Without 52 and 53, White can still play something like this, right? You can still try to annoy Black's corner. There are many, many choices. There are Joseki lessons out there. I don't have it yet on my channel, but I'll cover it, right? How to invade this one and seven, this corner closer. Like there are ways to do that. There are ways to do that, but it's definitely not this move. This is inviting Black to solidify, right? If White doesn't play at number 52, Black would still want to play at number 53. It's a very nice shape to solidify the corner. And now White tries to come in here um, the only move you can try is probably this, right? But in this situation, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You really just want to play 56 and 58, but here it doesn't really help with your ice space or anything. Um, and just please do not learn 56. Like, it's a terrible move. Like, this is probably the worst move in the situation besides the 1-1 one, one point, all right? So if you're trying to make a living shape, at least try something like this, right? But of course, black can come in this way. Of course, you can say you can play this, you pull back these, and this is really another end game move. And you're leaving uh, number 52 for black to attack and capture. So, of course, you can kind of, yeah, you can make a code this way, um, but this is really not interesting. It's really not interesting. But at least you should try number 56 right here. This move is just terrible. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. And Black's response is okay. I'll just play here. There's nothing for White to do. What does White, what does White want here? You can just kill it this way. Can White start this? I don't think. I don't think White can start anything here. It's, it's so it's so short on liberties, right? Black is threatening to cut here. Just doesn't work. This just doesn't work. 
you don't have you barely have any liberties on the on the upper right. Uh, so this white will fail even after fifty seven. So I would like I would prefer fifty seven here. But in a real game, white just dies this way. And it's already good for black, right? So you see this kind of swing in games. Uh, so never give up. Don't give up after 50 moves um, because your opponent might do something stupid. And they almost always do. At least my opponents. Um, and I'm very bad at opening, um, which is a surprise. So all of my, nearly all of my games, if you look at the AI percentage, uh, are comebacks. So I don't know what number 86 is doing. I'll go a little faster now. I don't know what number 86 is trying to accomplish. It's just sacrificing. So stones, number 90 doesn't make any sense at all. Just playing this exchange because white's corner here is dead so white is gaining nothing right white is gaining nothing from the previous 30 moves except a little bit of potential here so now this is actually if you ask ai ai would say it's about even i think um so these are pretty normal moves one on one is fine i think for the purpose of this game but you should know that white can cut you off like this eventually um, we'll kill the corner this way, which happened later. We can cut this way, allow you to give on the corner. But this is probably even better for white and sharper. So that's why number 101 is a little problematic. I will protect this push and cut. I'll play this. We'll just connect here. Um, white is trying to capture. 85 and 95 here, back escapes. Now white pushes through and cuts. It's probably okay. Yeah, this is a big end game move, but it's not the not the end of the world for black. It seems very big, and it is very big, but it's not the end of the world for black because black is alive here, down here. And the problem with white is that this corner is very problematic, and we'll see black losing its last chance to win here on the lower left uh, in just a little bit. So 114 captures the corner. For black, please tell me what you're thinking here with this move. Really doesn't make any sense on the first line against an endgame move. Please look at the center of the board. It is empty. Do something there, right? Do something there. Try some sharp moves like this, right? Try to attack your opponent like this. Don't play this endgame move. White can ignore you. Capturing, capturing this stone back doesn't help you with what's going on in the center, right? That's what Black needs to know. And of course, White plays <laughs> this move. It's a wrong move because White can play here, and if White captures, this is a call. Black no longer has a real eye, and whether Black can be alive down here becomes a problem. So. Number 115 is a really bad move. Again, take your eyes off of your opponent's previous move. Don't think, I just do whatever, this will be sente. It's actually not. If white plays at 116, first of all, this is a snapback. And if sometime down the line, white captures here, black is in trouble. Black may not have enough eye space here. This used to be a real eye, and now this is a co. So... Bat moves by both sides, 115 and 116. And now, back plays this, it's okay. The two sides are kind of trying to settle this. Again, watch out for these moves. Like, 122 is not sente. What are you trying to do? You're trying, it's an end game move. Again, center is empty. Try to do something toward the center. Try to put some pressure on black this way. Try to beat your eye space this way. But what is this? 122, the only justification is that you want to solidify like the four points here on the side, that's not big enough, right? If you're gaining three to four points when the board, the center of the board is still empty, uh, it's probably a wrong move, right? You shouldn't play end game moves at this stage. And black 123, also problematic. You're already alive. What are you, what are you trying to do? You're trying to escape. At least play this move, right? You want to connect with these four stones. These four stones are not alive. You're already alive here. You don't need to escape toward the center. You don't need to connect with this group. This group is also alive after 45. Really nice eye space. Really nice potential. So the direction here, right? Again, look at the center of the board. It's empty. And try to attack white this way. White is really vulnerable here. Or try to contain white this way, at least. 
right? You can build a wall here, then maybe the center can be blacks, right? So black is really just missing a lot of opportunities here in the mid game, right? White is white's 124 is fine because it's cutting off black and it's reducing black potential, right? It's coming into the center. Black plays this exchange, it's okay, right? So black really needs to play this move. It needs to attack white. And white, I don't think white can counter this way. Can white counter this? I don't think so. So white can only connect here, probably. And now, where's white's eye space after 127 and 129? Not, white will have to escape. And black has a pretty good chance of gaining something from at least threatening to kill white. So I think all these moves down here uh, are just playing in the wrong direction because white ne really needs to worry about this and black really needs to worry about attacking white. So that's why finally, right, white plays this move. It should probably be here, right? It's a little bigger. Um, so now, right, this is where life and death comes in, right? This is why there's a lot of life and death problems, all kinds of problems on my channel. It's because you need to know how to calculate those patterns so you can apply the same calculation skills to these games. So we're going to see some really wrong moves uh, that just don't seem to know whether something is alive or not. Just wasted moves. We're going to see some of those. So now, if you're black, of course you have to contain white. So I think this is, this is okay for the purpose of this problem, 131. If you contain white, you have a nice potential. Maybe you can build something here toward the center, right? Um, and if you're white, um, what should you do? You should try to make this bent four shape, right? Um, that's what should, white should do. And the strongest move black can do is like play here to make sure that this is a dead shape. But white can just capture 129 this way. And black can only play this, but this is not, this is not okay for, this is not okay for black. White will just come out this way. And black will have some problems here, probably. Um, so this is not actually, not playable for black to play 133. So probably we'll have to allow white to just live. Maybe something like this. White needs to protect this point. Maybe something like this or this. Maybe this. Yeah, and white is alive. And black will have to think about how to build something here in the center. In the real game, white plays here. And again, black, if you want to reduce white's eye space, you should play this. But of course, I take it as black trying to contain white in the 133. And white is already alive, right? So white is already alive after 136 because this is an, ex an extra real eye here. This is another real eye. Here's a real eye. And white is already alive. So black's goal now is to contain white. Make sure white doesn't come out this way. And again, 138 is threatening to capture 95 and 85. And this is about six points, right? This is six points. And it's a big end game move but it's definitely not Black's priority. So once again, always, always, always think about, can you take Sente? You don't need to save all of your stones, right? So this is a really slow move, 139. Play something like here, right? Threatening to pull out. Maybe I'll cut this way, but build something here on the upper side. Now it seems like Black can build something, right? If Black gains a lot of territory here, Black is still good. But just so many missed opportunities here. Black connects here, gains you six points really small, and now, like, what is number 140? This just this, this is, like, egregious, right? It's just a really bad move. First of all, white is already alive. Play something else. Play on the center. Play toward the center, right? Try to come out this way. There's so many moves here. Reduce black's center, right? This is still pretty empty. Think about how you might want to address that. Even if you want to play this endgame move, the move is not this. The move is right here, right? This is this is better, right? This is still threatening to cut off black and it's threatening to kind of jump out here and break black's enclosure. So number 40 should be here at least. Um, but this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And black's 141 here. Again, if it's enclosure, it's totally fine. But if it's not, um, then it's not a very efficient move. So once again, is white alive? That is the question. You're white, you need to think, am I alive? Here the answer is yes, you are alive. So please do not play an extra move, which is worth exactly one point, 142 right here, to make 
your living group more alive. It's totally, totally, totally useless. All right, because if white plays anywhere else, again, it's just play toward the center. This is already alive. This is a bent four shape. This is why everybody needs to check out chapter two, life and death. I introduce all these basic shapes, right? If you, if you play here, you should realize that white can build a bent four shape here, which is a living shape. And this is already at least one real eye. So if black tries to reduce this way, now you can play this, right? This is a real eye and another real eye. So you just need to sort through this kind of thing really fast. Um, and you're not proficient at life and death. This is the mistake that you're going to make, right? So 140 is wasted, 41, half wasted. Maybe it's solidifying um, this wall. Number 42, com 142, completely wasted. And now we have 143, which is another wasted move because Black's, this wedge is already, this wedge is not playable for white. White can't push through here. So white, Black will have to build this wall here and try to get something out of the center. That's Black's top priority. And by playing here, you, just, you do not reduce white's eye space. Again, this move is worth two points, maybe one, maybe more than two, about two to three points. And white is still alive. So it really doesn't do anything. So if you just go back and see, what am I doing here? Just ask, what am I doing? What, what am I trying to accomplish? Right? If it's to kill white, well, you can't really kill white. You can't accomplish that. Then what else are you accomplishing? And oftentimes the answer is I'm gaining like two points, right? That's what you're gaining. And in this situation, it's not okay. Just know when the board is still so empty, it's not okay to just gain three points, five points, even 10 points uh, at, this, at this point. You just have to note that. So now white finally breaks through with 144, it's threatening to capture black. And now this is much harder for black, right? Black push here, doesn't work. White is alive. Now white cuts, right? <laughs> So black is in a relatively vulnerable position. 159 is not a good move. What are you trying to protect against? Right, this is already a tiger's mouth. Black is already safe. What, what is 159 trying to protect? Right, it's a very slow move, terrible shape. Um, doesn't put any pressure on white. And of course, white plays this terrible move. Um, all it does is reduce white's own liberties, right? From three to two. Now these three stones only have two liberties left. Terrible move. So 59, 160. Both terrible moves. Um, but 162 can just pull back. Now black center is mostly gone. Black center is only here. And this is already very, very hard for black uh, because the, because of so many wasted moves and missed opportunities. Both sides wasted a lot of moves, but I think just black got unfortunate here. Um, so I'll just try to skip these. Okay, so let's talk about the lower left. That'll be the last pattern that I talk about here in this game. So how should you play the lower left? Um, the way the game played out, which is useful for teaching, I guess, is that it's, it's a really bad result for Black. Black played this move, which could work, but 183 is the wrong move. This is probably the best result for wet. If you allow your opponent to cut you this way, then this stone, this black stone here is, is dead. You know, it only has two liberties left. It has very little space to maneuver by itself. So that's why you should never let your opponent cut you this way if you're black. Never, never. So that's why black at least needs to play this move, right? Now you're gaining more eye space down here. White can just play this. But white can sacrifice. I mean, this is probably still, white still wins. But at least black is gaining something here. White relents. You can try to come into the corner. In this situation, it might work because white has its own weaknesses on the outside. Like this. So you can sort out the race to capture on your own. Maybe black has a chance. So at least play 183, 185 this way. Right? You're gaining more down here. In the real game, there's no eye space for black. That's the main problem. You don't have eye space. You can't build a single real eye. Playing on the first line doesn't work. Yeah, and black is already dead here. I'm not gonna play the other moves. But usually when you have when you have this shape, right, you wanna try in this situation you wanna try the three three point.
So let's try that. So white, if white just <laughs> allows you to take the corner like this, then this is great for black. Okay, this is great for black. So white will want to connect here. Black can clamp down here. White will have to stand down here or play this Atari. Uh, both are fine. Note that white cannot play this bet. Otherwise, black will Atari forcing white to connect. And now we'll, black is alive after 187 here. This is another real eye. So in this situation, white probably plays this move. And black can probably make a living shape this way. Um, shouldn't be too hard. It shouldn't be too hard. It should be something like this. Um, so this is playable over black on the corner. Or you can play this move um, and see what happens. Because now black has this cutting point. Even without this exchange, black has this cutting point. But you want, might want to play this exchange first. It's good for liberties. And then you can cut. So these are the things to try. I won't get into the details. You can work it out on your own if you're interested. Um, but this is the basic idea, right? When you're playing online, you're usually under some kind of time constraint. So this is the thing to try. This sequence or this sequence. Right? This sequence. Uh, in this situation, it's especially good for black because black is really strong on the outside and white is not fully connected. White will have to worry about its own connection. So overall, this is the last bit that I'll show. After 184, 181 is already dead inside. Right? Crawling here will not work either. This is just not enough eye space, not enough liberties for black. So after this exchange, um, this game is pretty much over. Black just doesn't have enough territory. Um, only this corner on the upper right. Something here, a little bit here, a little bit on the lower side. Um, and white has this corner. It's really big on the upper side and the lower right corner. And there's just not enough for black. So I think overall, it's a good effort by both sides. Um, white's probably played more wrong moves than black, but it just turns out that black had worse luck in this game. Um, but do make sure you understand what I'm talking about when I say wasted moves because you shouldn't try to play endgame moves at the beginning or in the mid game. And of course, all the moves are just the moves, right? I applaud everybody in the community for keep playing Go, for not giving up on the game, and for loving the game, right? So nothing here is personal, it's really just about the moves. If we can all avoid these mistakes, we'll play. At a much better level and that's what i'm hoping to achieve through these game reviews so i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you at the next game review thank you for watching